Hey guys, what's cracking? This is Chris here at Mango and today I'm bringing you a video on map projections. Now I know what you're thinking, map projections, ooh. This is gonna be all about maths and geometry and complicated equations, but don't worry. This is gonna be a beginner's guide, so we're gonna be gentle with you and we're gonna ease you into the basics of map projections and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll firstly understand what a map projection is, and more importantly, you'll understand what impact it has on your map applications, especially in terms of measurements of distance and area. So what's a map projection? A map projection, as you can see on screen at the moment, is the process of transform, transforming a spherical object into a two-dimensional flat surface. So that usually means taking a sphere, in this case the Earth, and transforming it into a flat square or rectangle. Now, as you can imagine, if I took a football and I began cutting it up with a knife and tried to flatten it out, it wouldn't fit together perfectly into a rectangle or a square. So a projection is a mathematical equation that tells uh, a mapping system how to fill in those gaps and how to populate the entire rectangle. When it comes to map projections, distortions are the name of the game. Think back to our football. If we slice the football up and we try and spread it out into a rectangle, in order to make that shape, we're going to have to introduce some distortions of the picture that was contained on the surface of that sphere. We're either going to lose um, the distances, they're no longer going to be accurate, or the shapes will be inaccurate, or the areas will be inaccurate, or the directions will be inaccurate. So when creating a projection, it's always a question of compromise. Uh, which of these attributes are we willing to compromise? Some projections try to maintain um, the correct distances between locations uh, on the surface. Others try to maintain the area or the shape or the direction. And many projections try to find a sweet spot, a balance in all of these variables that gives the most accurate visual representation for a specific area on the globe. That's why you often see projections that are for individual countries, states or regions. So let's take a look at one of these projections and look at the distortions that it introduces. Today we're going to be looking at the Web Mercator projection. Now I've chosen the Web Mercator projection not because it's the best projection by any means, but because it's probably the most viewed projection of all map projections today. Because this is the projection that's used by web mapping systems such as Google Maps, Bing, or the base maps that you see on Mango. So, the map that you see on screen at the moment is a web mercator projection of the globe. Now, for those of you who are digital immigrants like myself and learn geography from a textbook rather than Google Maps, you'll be looking at this map and you'll notice that there's one or two things wrong. First of all, Antarctica seems to have a larger land mass than the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the continents combined. And secondly, Greenland looks to be at least as large as Africa. This is because the Web Mercator projection creates very large distortions at the poles because it's stretched um, the sphere out into a square, whilst naturally that sphere wants to be stretched into a rectangle shape. Now, there's a lot of technical reasons why Google, who originally created this, um, this projection system, chose to do that. Mainly it was to do with storage efficiency and the speed which they could send uh, map tiles across the internet. But I'm not gonna bore you with the technical details of that today. Maybe we'll save that for another video. Okay, so, but the main thing here is these distortions at the pole. So as we see here, Greenland is the same size as Africa. So as the image shows here, the image on the left shows Africa compared to Greenland using the Web Mercator projection. As we can see, they're nearly the same size. On the right, we see how big they are in comparison um, in, in reality. As you can see, Greenland is a fraction of the size of Africa. So now that you understand projections and you also have an understanding of the distortions that they can introduce in your map visualizations, you're probably wondering uh, what practical impact does that have? What impact does that have on me when I'm interacting with a map application? Or if you're a maker of uh, maps or web maps, what impact does it have for your users? I think one of the best ways to demonstrate this is by using circles and radiuses. So we'll go back here to this uh, base map on Mango um, that's in the Web Mercator projection again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of circles uh, on the map and using a radius tool. So I'm going to draw one circle up here near Greenland and let's make the circle say 500 kilometers wide. 
Okay, so on this map at the moment, that 500 kilometer uh, wide circle, um, in terms of my screen size, it's probably about five centimeters wide. So let's see what happens if I draw the circle again uh, close to the equator. We can see that now uh, 500 kilometers is, is smaller than the tip of my little finger. So there's a big difference between uh, what the area of a 500 kilometer circle looks like near the equator and what it looks like uh, near Greenland. So how can that impact your tools and your queries and your measurements? Um, let's look at a layer that I've prepared um, on this map previously. So this is a map where I place two points, one in Mexico and one in northern Canada. And once I place the points, I used a buffering tool to draw a circle exactly 500 kilometers around each of those individual points. So the two circles that you see in screen, on screen, the yellow ones, um, on the surface of the true earth are exactly the same size and they have an exact radius of 500 kilometers from that point. But looking on the map, you can't see that. It's obvious to see here that the circle in Mexico looks much smaller on this map and the circle in Canada looks much larger. What's more, is the circle in Canada, as you can see, is no longer a perfect circle. It's starting to resemble an egg shape. And we can see that the dot, the green dot here, which is the center point of that circle, uh, looks like it's much closer to the southern edge of the circle than it is to the northern edge. But the reality is that every edge around this circle is exactly 500 kilometers away from the center. It's just the projection that is making the map or, or making that circle uh, distort and display like an egg shape. It's the projection that's making it look much larger than the circle in Mexico. And before we go, I wanna show you one last application that really solidifies the point of how large these distortions are. This is an application that's been built using the geodesic circle plugin for Leaflet, uh, link in the description below. And it allows me to drew, uh, move the cursor around the map and the circle that you see on screen is exactly a thousand kilometers. So we can see how small a thousand kilometers is on this projection when we're near the equator, and we can see how massive the distortion is as we move north towards the poles. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit the like button below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. I'm Chris at Mango, and I'll see you next time.